What's up, guys? Jaxel here. Um, in the last video I did for Scoreboard Assistant and my Scoreboard Primer, I um, I very quickly alluded to the fact that with the new uh, WebSocket system in the Scoreboard Assistant, you could theoretically control your stream layouts from a remote computer. Uh, several of you have already messaged me on Facebook asking, uh, can you explain this further? Well, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to make a short video right now explaining how to control Scoreboard Assistant. Uh, well, not necessarily Scoreboard Assistant, but control your scripts from a remote computer. Uh, now, if you... Um if uh, you use my scoreboard primer, with the newest version, I include both the old uh, XML uh, fetching system and the new WebSocket uh, system. And if you look at the WebSocket system, uh, basically you'll see something similar to this. Now, this scoreboard has been customized for my streams because... I want them to look a little bit different on my streams because I don't want to use a generic one, nor did I release this one publicly. But this one's my version, and it's pretty simple. You can see how it works. We have zero playing cloud. Uh, let's put in, let's see, who do we want to put in? We want to put in Ryu being played by false. When we click save, you'll see it'll send the data out. And now we have false playing zero right here. It's pretty simple. Um, you can see by this text that it's uh, receiving the WebSocket from localhost 58.341. Now, uh, if you want, we want to do it remotely, not from localhost. Localhost means from the current computer. And this is actually pretty simple. So what I have is I have another computer. Uh, let's uh, switch over to the other computer. There we go. This is my other computer where I'm actually recording this from. And here I have a, uh, where's my mouse? There it is. Uh, I have an exact replica of my scoreboard assistant folder on the other computer. And we're gonna open that up. And let's see, let's change it from, s da, da, da. you know, I'm losing my mouse because XSplit uh, does weird things. Let's say we got Nakat playing Charizard and uh, Nairo playing. I have no idea who these people play, so let's just say Greninja. All right. Now, thing about this script, this script is still monitoring the local file. Uh, very easily, you can make it so you monitor a remote file, or not a remote file, a remote computer on the same network. Um, you could also do it a remote computer across to a different network, such as across the internet, but I'm not going to be explaining how to do that because that's significantly more complicated and there's no single tutorial for that because that's all about uh, how you set up your, uh, your networks and your routers with your port forwarding and all that. And everyone's got different routers, so the settings are different. And so I'm just not going to do that. What we're doing here is assuming that both computers are on the same network. Okay, so uh, if we go back to our original computer, here we go, and we go to the scripts folder and open up uh, global.js. Let's open that up. You'll see we have uh, a line on top li right here that says var socket URL equals websocket localhost 48341. Now, if I want to monitor a different computer, all I need to do is input a different URL. So instead of localhost, we're going to change it to the address of the other computer on the network. So let's switch to the other computer. There we go. And I'm going to switch to go to the bottom, open up Network Sharing Center, click on Local Area Connection, click on Details. And I'm going to look for the local address on the network, which we have right here. 192.168.1.128. Damn, I lost my mouse again. All right. And now let's go back to the previous computer. And let's replace this text for localhost with, uh, where's my keyboard? 192.168.1.128. There we go. And then let's click Save. And now when we refresh this page, 
instead of it going to local host, it's going to 192.168.128. And you'll notice, even though this is the local X split, it has the information from the other um, scoreboard assistant on the other computer. All right, I'm going to split screen, and I'm going to show both computers on a single screen now. Uh, here we go. And we have uh, we have this one right here, which is the current one. Or, I'm sorry, the remote one. And then we have the local one over here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some changes here. Let's uh, go chain ace or LLDL and let's say he's going to play uh, Peach and click save and you'll see the other computer has now updated these are two completely different computers and we're working across networks here across I'm sorry across the same network here both computers so I'm controlling the scoreboard uh, program on this computer with the scoreboard assistant on a different computer. If I close this one, as you can see, it doesn't affect anything here. Uh, I can also, let's change the scores. Nairo gets a point. There we go. And you know, that it's really simple. All I did was change one line of code. Let's uh, bring that back down. And that's just change localhost to the address of the other computer. Could not be simpler than that. And let's see what happens when I close this one. It's going to lose connection. There we go. See? Simple. Very easy. Have a good night, guys.